Hey guys, sorry sometimes I look blank for a couple of seconds is because I'm waiting for my phone to tell me that it's recording and sometimes my phone is a little slow. Sorry about that. All right, well we've got the 1305. You can see it's partially wet so it is clumping and I just kind of shook it out just a little bit for the photo of the thumbnail of the video. This is the Samoog 1305. It's got some nice bristles. I'm going to put him back in the water. He's been soaking for several minutes. And I'm getting back into my Borathon. And this is one of the uh, one of my favorites of all the different boars that I have. The um, It's got some of the higher end bristles from Samoog. Carve. Christopher Bradley Razor, brass. I've given it a hand polish on the top cap and the, this, is it a ferrule? I don't know. And also a little bit on the bottom there. The rest is just all natural, the bead blasted finish. This is the B open comb, same razor setup that I used yesterday. The blade I'm going to put in it yesterday was a blue diamond from Supermax, I believe. And it, shaved well but it wasn't smooth and comfy so we've got a pole silver right here and it has 23 uses approximately and so let's see see how it does i haven't tried a pole silver in this one yet and we're going to be using pre de provence and this is their scent that is number 63. if you like sage then the pre de provence original uh, or un if it's unspecified then it's the uh, Pre de Provence original. They're both, uh, as far as I know, vegan soaps and they are nice. Um, this PDP 63, number 63, is one that has a nice warm scent. I really enjoy the scent. Um, and I'm going to try to dial in the performance a little better today. I've talked about this soap for a long time because it gives good performance. Uh, and I'm trying to find if, it, if it's great. Or if it's very good, you know, where does it really lie? Because it's, uh, I tried it in the beginning of my shaving career, and then because there's so many awesome options, I haven't really revisited it because I kind of knew it was good. So, we've got the pole silver in the razor now. And then it is time to splash a little bit of water on my face. And I've had that puck of soap here soaking. We'll load up in just a second. A little water on my face. I've got a charging cable coming across the sink here. You can't see it, but that's why I'm not able to get my face down by the sink. Be really curious when the uh, rinses happen, how that's going to work. All right. Now, uh, yesterday was a 40 second load with a a big badger brush, 26 millimeter, big, dense brush. So now we have a smaller bore brush. Let's try 30, 30 seconds. And this is also a, well, yesterday, excuse me, yesterday's badger was a soft badger and this is a soft bore. This is not a stiff, scratchy bore like some Omegas and that sort of thing. I'm gonna, I shook out most of the water. And so let's do our 30 seconds. We'll start at 55. And so we'll keep going until 25. Hopefully, the puck won't start rotating like it did yesterday. Had to squeeze the aluminum tin here to keep the puck in place. A lot of, not a lot of backbone with this brush, and so it's easily splaying. And I believe that might put us at. My counter is frozen up. Who knows if this video is actually continuing. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, so I believe I stopped at about the right time for a 30 second load. And uh, we can, you can see we do have some airy bubbly stuff and, uh, and that's okay. We're not, um, I don't think we need to necessarily grab that and try to put that into the bowl. So I'm going to clean up the sides of the tub here. Uh, just a little bit of soap on the side 
Man, my phone's going slow today. I can't tell if it's recording. Um, I'm so sorry. If there's just a little bit of lather on the side, then you can just do a wipe with the towel. But yeah, as you could see, it was all over. So I flipped the tin here upside down, holding the puck in place with my finger and then let the water run down around it. That's just what I do. I'm not saying it's right. All right, so we've got 30 seconds of soap loaded on here. Doesn't look like a whole lot. So we'll just see how it works out. The puck did get soaked in water for 10 minutes. The bore is about the same. And I'm back to my normal lather bowl. Happy to be back. The one thing I didn't like about the timeless was the, the sidewalls. The brush is just going to rub up against the sidewalls a lot more. Like right here, I have a curve on the bowl and so the uh, mainly just the tips are what touch the bowl and so there's no lateral pulling of the of the bristles and that's the only thing that really concerns me about that timeless bowl but if you use kind of an inexpensive uh, synthetic that's not really much of a concern with that kind of brush Curious, this, this is a soft brush, soft tips. See if I was able to load enough soap uh, for, for my passes. We'll just have to see. I did overwater it just a hair yesterday. Three and a half teaspoons for 40 seconds. And I ended up with about seven passes of lather. And it was just a hair maybe oh uh, but what it was is actually performed reasonably well but I wanted to see maybe if I could make it a little creamier feeling and so that's maybe what I'm gonna try to do today you know this is a little slow in coming up here so what I'm gonna do is assume that I didn't load enough soap so I'm gonna go back to my puck here I want to add just a touch of water on top of the puck and then I'm going I'm to keep it down low just because I'm going to drip and stuff. And uh, and so 15 seconds of loading. I'm going to add a little time there. Just to be on the safe side. We've got two teaspoons of water in the bowl already. And this is a vegan soap. I'm going to get it good and mixed up here, and then I'm going to give it a good feel. Uh, see how the creaminess feels. But at approximately $11 is what Amazon had this soap for uh, recently when I looked at it. And this is a quad milled soap, and that means it is going to give you lots of lather uh, for, your, for your money. It's going to give you lots of passes per ounce. And so it represents a possibly a really good value. And that's the reason I'm using, I'm going to be using it for not necessarily 15 consecutive shaves, but 15 shaves in a short amount of time. I'll bring in a few here and there, a few other soaps, but I want to uh, just find out because I think this is a terrific soap for just about anybody, but especially for people who are maybe on a budget. I mean, can you imagine paying $11 for shaving soap and having it last you a year and a half? I mean, I think that's a very, very real possibility with this soap. And then to have it smell so good and perform really well, I think that's just a, a big win. And so, yeah, we've already gotten to a creamy look 
to it, you know, it's, it's, it's a very solid soap. You know, most of the soaps that I shave with don't look like this because they, we have valleys and, and hills and things like that. Usually it's a little more elastic than that. But I learned last time that maybe this guy needs to not quite be as elastic as I might normally take it. So I'm going to be paying attention to that as I'm mixing up here. I've got three teaspoons in it now. I might not do much more than that. Just to kind of see if I can land on either the perfect zone or slightly drier than perfect, but still imperfect, you know, in the, in the perfect area to where it just feels really creamy and luxurious and good and slick and all that. So that's where we're trying to land here. And there we go. See, we're increasing in volume as we're adding, as we're adding water. Looks like plenty of soap to do the job. Let's take a feel. And because it's, and maybe because it's a vegan soap, it is kind of a watery slickness and not one that is um, kind of buttery and fatty like a tallow soap might provide. But nonetheless, it's protective and slick, and that's really, uh, you know, what matters. We're talking a, a budget item here, and so smells great, you know, feels relatively good, uh, provides nice slick protection on your face, and that's... Um, a lot to ask for and if it's going to deliver at that price then that's remarkable especially for so many shaves to be able to be achieved all right i definitely would normally add more water to some to a lather that looked like this so i'm just going to mix it for 20 30 more seconds and then let's use it see how it ends up one of my mixing techniques is obviously just a circle but another one is, especially with uh, bore brushes, is, uh, yeah, is to push it down from the walls because, number one, it takes the concentrate kind of from the walls and brings it down to be with the other part of the soap and getting a good uniform mix because of that. But it also presses the lather into the knot, and then that can help some of the, uh, hopefully, all of the concentrate that's been inside the brush from the loading process that can help that to become part of the main lather as well so a nice circulation kind of kind of thing often a lather will look a little too thin until i do that press like that for a little bit it will change the lather it will thicken it up make it more creamy because the Soap hadn't had a chance yet to get really mixed from the brush. All right, well, we're looking good. So, a little water on my face. The hot water hasn't quite made it up here yet, so right now this is cold, cold water. It does help sometimes if you have inflammation issues. If you... Uh, uh, tenderness you feel on your face during the shave switch on the cold and give yourself a splash that way and it really uh, calms down inflammation reduces that feeling I really uh, enjoy that okay let's see how this lather feels I do bring the hot up by um, using that tap and so maybe in the middle of the shave, I'll, I'll get some hot coming out of the tap. And what that'll do is just take my lather, uh, take my water to the, bring it up to the tepid stage. I won't actually use the hot. Now the tip feel here is really soft. There's a lot of splay. I do feel like uh, many of the tips are being are floppy enough to where they're being pushed to the side and I'm feeling kind of part of the center of the brush the where they where the fibers have bent over and I'm feeling kind of some of the curvy part I do kind of feel like that and so one of the things I try to do to 
keep feeling the tips is just to back off the pressure just a little bit and then you start feeling the tips again. This definitely looks like I, I might normally want to add a little bit more water to this. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to see how, how everything works. So let's massage the leather in. Get it to really work into my top layers of skin so that it can protect it. Also, with me, I don't do any kind of pre-shave other than that splash of water. And so this is going to uh, clean, help to clean my skin. Yeah, great smell. Really happy with that. All right, it's not a super thin, a uh, super thick coat of lather. That's okay. So this is the twenty-first use of this bore brush, and many times, because as, because of the borathon, and I was bringing so many bores up at one time, I I didn't really want to just use them, which is what I often do, because that can make a brush break in a little bit longer and so what I would do is I would soak the brush for one or three hours prior to the shave yeah this this blade even when it's got 23 or so uses on it is nicer than that blue diamond that only had six uses on it you know and that's subjective that's just me Blue Diamond from Super Max might be your favorite blade, but this Pulse Silver has really become a blade that I enjoy in many razors. Light touch. And I'm not trying to mow down everything in the first pass. All right, a little quick rinse. half rinse really. All right, let's load up the brush again. So these soft tips, you know, they um, I definitely needed that extra load time. 45 seconds, I believe, is kind of what I've ended up total now. And I definitely needed that because these tips are so soft, it, they just need a little bit extra time on the soap. Because that 26 millimeter maggard super high density brush had so many more tips to to gather up soap than this guy. But in terms of flow through, just sometimes a light feeling is better than rubbing you know, badger fur, a, a dense badger fur on you. Sometimes I like to switch back to my lighter lighter weight badgers instead of the super high densities. So now cross grain. Yep, feels great. Very comfortable shave. The uh, the Blue Diamond did not treat me quite as well. I do have some blade feel here. And it's possible with a newer pole silver, I might not have that. The folks at Carve, Chris says that the B open comb, which is what I have here, is most likely to feel like or similar to the C solid bar one notch up is kind of what they're saying because open combs tend to be all other things being exactly equal talking about the same model razor um, the open open combs will often be just a touch more um, aggressive a little bit more blade feel more efficient that sort of thing all right 
the second one is down. So we'll rinse. Water's flying everywhere because I can't get my head down quite as much. So it's running down my arms and that sort of thing. Okay, so third pass. And I still got enough lather. And that, uh, that worked out. I'm really also glad that I went back for that 15 seconds. I'm going to have some excess, but, you know, not tons. Like I did yesterday. So I believe that I may have to change my, you know, kind of opinion about this lather. It's serviceable and, uh, and very good for the, and crazy good for the amount of shaves you get and for the price, you know. It's one of the better bargains out there. But it's not a, uh, you know, it's not an amazing lather. There are definitely other vegan soaps that uh, perform better. Southern Witchcrafts is one that jumps into mind. Probably Katie's Bubbles, probably Soap Commander, perhaps. Um, however, I don't think any of them can beat the uh, number of shaves you're going to get out of your, your single container of soap. Super comfortable at this point. The third pass. And I'm going to remember on the third pass to do a little with this is my tricky spot right here. Do a little bit of skin tugging, lift up my chin the other direction as well, and then come at it kind of opposite like I have been the whole shave. So I'm kind of doing a, uh, a cross grain pass in this area right here. The whole time, really. It's just that the first two times, it's one direction. And the third pass, the cross crane is in the opposite direction. That is a common technique that a lot of guys use when they have discovered that they can't go against the grain. It seems to just lift up my hairs into the blade. And I end up with cuts and irritation on almost all razors. I have found a couple that I can do it with. All right, skin feels terrific. No irritation. Uh, yesterday, the Blue Diamond did leave me with a little bit of an irritation feeling. The balm took care of it really easily, but this blade is probably gonna give me the same result with less, with, with zero irritation. Now this particular uh, lather here, um, I don't know, it, it might be about as good as this soap is going to get. I may try to go even a little drier and just see what happens. During the rinses, I'm not really feeling like concentrate on my face. Now right now, the after the rinse, I do feel a nice slick layer on there. It's very thin, but it's evident, very noticeable. And so that's why the, the soap is doing its job because that is there. All right, let's throw on, we'll do a touch up pass right here. And again, we'll try that same strategy, just a light touch here. May try it a little, even a little drier than this. You just see what I get. I will also try face lathering it just to see if anything uh, becomes different from that. Kind of like when I was playing around with um, chiseled face during austere August using midnight stag soap the whole time. 
I played around with different application methods since I knew I was going to be using the same soap each time. I experimented with finding the lowest amount of load time that I could get away with each day. I discovered that with bowl lathering, I was able to make better use of my soap and have better lathers. I got four nice lathers out of seven seconds of loading with that Zenith brush. I had to switch to 10 seconds of loading when I was face lathering. And my third pass wasn't very nice. It was serviceable, but it wasn't very nice where I got four nice passes with the bowl lathering using less soap. So that was pretty cool. A little data result there. Um, oh man, this smell. I love this uh, warm, spicy, and not spicy. Like I'm not, I'm not, it's almost like a, a, a seasoning, a, uh, uh, yeah, a, a spice, but not a food spice, not pepper, paprika, you know, obviously. Sometimes black pepper is used in uh, shaving soaps. Nothing, nothing like that. Just a nice, uh, a little bit of woodsy as well. It's just a just nice, uh, a nice scent that, that I happen to like. And I did just, I did a 45 second load and I did use three teaspoons. And I bet because this brush did not pull up as much soap, I shouldn't have gone with the three teaspoons. Uh, pulling up as much soap as compared to yesterday with the higher density brush. It pulled up a lot of soap. All right. So I believe let's try a little cold water. And there we go. Now let's check out the uh, closeness here. Oh yeah, that's nice. A little bit of redness and tenderness as I went back and, uh, and tried to get that area a little better. I don't see any length on very many hairs at all. I think the blue diamond may have given me a better result, but I like the comfort of this one better. And so I'd take that me myself because this is still a great shave that, you know, any, pretty much any business is going to be happy with in terms of how I'm being presentable at work. All right. I don't have, I could pull off another pass with what I have left. So uh, with this brush, Smallish bore, very soft bore. Looks like 50 seconds, 55 seconds might be a better load time to give myself just a little bit extra lather to work with. And that might be wise to then not change the water. So we're increasing the soap part of the ratio, keeping the water the same. And that means it would be a little bit more creamy. So that might be worth trying next time. Uh, also, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but with the Borathon, all the bore brushes that are in this series have been, I've, I've taken long times of soaking before the shave. But I'm going to stop that now that we've put 20 uses on them all. And I'm going to just soak them as I prep my gear. So 6, 10, 12 minutes of uh, soak time before the shave and so that should help them to continue to to break in and and all that just fine because the the heavy part of the breaking in is has already been accomplished they're all enjoyable almost all of them are enjoyable brushes all right i'm gonna do some cleaning up we do have lots of tips split on this brush especially around the outside of the knot and so it's going to get softer and softer and i'm really curious how it transforms over the next couple dozen uses. I'm sure it's, as you can see, we've got some real outliers here. I'm sure it's gonna just keep expanding with more of these bristles coming out to, to lean out that way. And as more and more split, I'm really interested to see with, uh, and maybe we get a little bit more density as we get some splits. And that would be welcome because it uh, almost feels a little sparse at this point. Um, so that'll be fun to watch. Yeah, here we go. We got this, this little guy right there. He split just a little bit. There were others that were split about four times that amount. Oh, there's a little tiny one there. So I just dropped it up and down with the towel just to, uh, start to dry it out. If you are breaking in a bore, if you can, 
uh, use another brush every other day. To, and then that will help the dry, wet dry cycle of your brush you're trying to break in, your bore, to maybe help to get it there a little quicker. But I like these guys. I mean, and we're talking not a very big expense. $15, $18 for these Samogs. And, and they present a very nice, comfortable uh, feeling, a, an interactive, dynamic experience as you use it and watch it change and grow. I think it's terrific. I personally like them a lot better than synthetics, but a lot of people love synthetics, so feel free to give one of those a try if you, uh, if you want. So just drying my lather bowl. It sure was nice to be back in this guy whipping up a lather. This is a Roger Quintero 3D printable lather bowl. If you brush rest right here, if you can uh, print your own things with a 3D printer or have access to one, there's a couple of different uh, vendors out there if you that you can send the files to and have them print it for you and mail it to you. MakeXYZ.com is one of them and they'll set you up with somebody nearby who, uh, hopefully nearby, but somebody who can then uh, work with you and print it up for you. The, uh, the files you need are available via a link on the description of my video. It'll take you right to the thingiverse.com page where the files are stored. You can download those and use them as you will. It's generously donated by the files were created and made public by Roger Quintero. And uh, hey, speaking of bowls, I want to show you a little project. Um, this is a lather bowl that I used for several months. It's from the Dollar Tree, and it's just a soup bowl. Uh, one thing I like about it is it, it has kind of a more vertical nature here before it starts to curve in. There are definitely plenty of bowls out there that have a, a much shallower cut here. And what that translates into is less volume inside. Uh, but I used this really well, enjoyed it, but can you see we've got some extra little bits in there. This is from the Dollar Tree. This is one dollar. It's just a ceramic bowl, uh, soup or salad type bowl. Well, the Dollar Tree also has a couple other things. It has these glass beads for decoration in the uh, decoration aisle. And the Dollar Tree is a store we have here in the U.S. where everything's one dollar. And, uh, and sometimes it's good stuff. It's worth a dollar. Sometimes it's cheap junk. So, you know, you get what you pay for sometimes. But these were just simple glass beads. I mean, how 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 hard is it to make glass beads? So that seems like a worthwhile thing. So I bought a whole big old bag of those for one dollar. Picked out four of them. I also bought a tube of uh, glue. Uh, adhesive. Um, almost like super glue, but more of a, a fix-all adhesive. It was one tube. It said it did okay with moisture. So that's what I used. I put a dab of that on the bottom of each uh, one of these little rocks earlier today. They're holding really well. I almost used it today, but I said, let's make sure this cures up really well. I'm going to give it another day of curing. And so we'll see. And so those little guys, hopefully they'll just help me to, uh, number one, agitate the lather, build up a lather quicker than a smooth bowl might. Number two, they will stop the brush because I don't have this cool brush rest like the other bowl that I have. And so it'll stop the brush from sinking down in the lather. They'll just, uh, the brush will be able to rest on those. And so this is a $3 project. The bowl, $1. The rocks, $1. And the tube of glue, $1. And you can put as many of these glass things on here as you want. Some people like to do quarters and coins and glue those to the bottom of a bowl. I wanted something that would actually cause the bristles of the brush to flex when it went over them. Instead of the uh, coins with such a small height difference, different differential from the bottom of the bowl, it's just almost like a little sheer thing that does help build lather a little bit. It's like a little bit of texture. But these, these glass, glass, thing, glass uh, beads are really going to cause some flexing with the bristles. And as those bristles rub up against each other as they flex, my belief is 
that's where we're getting some nice lather building action. And so that I'm just, just a, an educated guess, uh, but I'm looking forward to trying it. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. And they have a few different colors for this ceramic uh, bowl that you can choose from if you want to do that. Now you can see some of the glue came out around the, because uh, I used, I used a lot more glue than I probably should have. It looked like it wasn't going to spread out, more like it was a gel, but then it really kind of turned into a liquid. One thing I had to do was, as the glue dried, the bottom here is not actually flat. It's it's just a little bit rounded, and so the uh, beads wanted to slide into the middle. And so I had to keep pushing each one of them out back into their original position for several minutes until the glue dried enough to where it held them in place. All right, so for $3, a lather bowl with an agitator with a very nice agitators inside, the only thing it's lacking it, for me is an interned lip right here. Right now, this is this curves outwards just, just a little bit, but an interned lip, and I would consider this a complete and enjoyable lather bowl for sure. All right. Still... You can still see a little bit of the imprint of the 63 right here. So very little soap is being used each time and a terrific scent. I'll try to use a little bit less water next time. See what happens if it's a little bit more creamy. Let's pick a post shave product. Sterling Tuscany. It has spices that may be related to the soap I just used. PDP number 63. It has cypress and some kind of floral like violet or uh, orchid. Can't remember which. I think violet. It's got bergamot as well. And uh, But the, maybe those spices will be a link between the soap scent and this. And this is just a nice smooth scent. It's not jarring if you're going for something zesty to start your day. This is not your guy. But like me, if you're a night shaver especially, and you just want something easy going, just a pleasant smell, kind of masculine, kind of fresh, kind of little touch of uh, fruit because of the bergamot, kind of an orange, very light orange. But you know what it kind of smells like when you add all the little notes together is wild cherry, and I'm a big fan of that as well. Somehow, the floral plus the bergamot plus the spices adds up to be kind of a wild cherry scent. And so, we can kind of test the compatibility of these two by smelling the applicant balm hand versus the... Yeah, I think they go together nicely. So, pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to clean up. All right, the final sum up here. For the soap and water combo, I used three, and a half, three teaspoons of water, 45 seconds of loading. I think maybe I want to try 55 seconds of loading with a, a soft bore brush like this. Keep the water the same at three. Maybe that increase the viscosity just a little bit of the soap, uh, of the lather. And we'll see how that goes. I think I enjoyed this shave pretty well, and I'm just playing around with tiny tweaks, you know, at this point. The brush did well. The razor, very nice with a 24th use Nasset blade in it. Pretty confident that, I'm sorry, Nasset uh, pole silver blade in it. And a younger pole silver probably be even more effortless. And I might try a younger blade tomorrow. Uh, maybe use the same razor again. Who knows? I'm having fun with it. I really like the carve. Um, and uh, I may we may have to start saying Christopher Bradley razor, or maybe even version one, because I've heard they're coming out with a different different head, uh, other head options. And so calling it a carve is going to start applying to more than one razor now. We've already got some stainless steel versions getting out there. Uh, with the uh, the winter end of 2019, uh, them uh, starting to produce those and get them out to people. So it's very cool. We've got the brass out. I think there are even some aluminum ones out. 
as well as the um, stainless steel. So very cool. Uh, really enjoying the scent of the number 63 from PDP, Prix de Provence. And the Tuscany from Sterling is a great transition. Uh, they're going to phase out the Tuscany, so uh, that particular uh, scent is not going to be as available as it is right now. But, uh, but I, I'm sure going to enjoy it while I have it. All right, guys. Uh, I think we're good. It was a delightful shave. I'm walking away with no irritation at all. And at the end of the shave, I could have used an alcohol splash if I wanted to. I didn't really feel like my skin needed as much rejuvenation, as much healing as yesterday's Blue Diamond experience uh, gave it. I did walk, I am walking away with not quite as good of a close cut, but it's still a very nice close cut that I don't have a problem with at all. Well, there we go. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. I sure hope there's been something in this video that helped you out. You take care. Bye.